Hi, I'm Hugo, and welcome to my World Machine tutorial series. In this video, I will cover the basic noise and forward noise device. These two generators are widely used and essential tools for your World Machine terrain. We start off with the basic noise device, which can be found in the generator tab. The basic noise device is a Perlin noise generator. Before we go any further, let's talk about what noise and Perlin noise are. Noise is a pseudo randomly generated collection of values. There is no coherence and an image produced out of just noise would look really grainy. It isn't truly random because computers can't easily create true random values and, just like how it's done in World Machine, often the generated values are based on a seed. The nice thing of using a seed is that for a given seed you will always get the same noise, as long as the generator is the same. But as said, just noise would give us a grainy image and if we look at terrain it does not look grainy. And that's why World Machine uses Perlin noise instead. Perlin noise, developed by Ken Perlin, is a type of coherent noise. Instead of choosing just a random value for each pixel, the context is now taken into account and therefore gradients are created. Sadly, at its own, Perlin noise still doesn't look all that good, as it is way too smooth. So, we need something else. To create more interesting noise, multiple layers of Perlin noise are used, which are called octaves. Each octave is at a smaller scale and lower intensity. The rate at which each octave becomes smaller is controlled by the lacunarity property of the noise. The rate at which the intensity of each octave decreases is controlled by the persistence property of the noise. The usage of multiple octaves, which can be self-similar, is why this type of noise is also called fractal noise. If you want an even more detailed explanation of Perlin noise, check out the video by Sebastian I've linked in the description. With all that knowledge in place, we can now take a look at the basic noise device. When opening the properties, we are greeted by a quite a set of parameters. At the top, we have the style parameter, which is an enumeration of the basic, rigid and billowy types of noise. The basic style is the classic implementation of the burden noise. The rigid style has a very different result, as it has much sharper edges. The billowy style is the inverse of the rigid style and looks a bit lumpy creating nice waving features. Underneath that, we have the feature scale parameter. With this, we can determine the scale of the noise, which can go from 20 cm up to 192 km. When you're aiming for a certain type of terrain, it can help to look it up on, for example, Google Maps, to get a sense of the scaling, maybe even measuring the scale of the features, to then adjust the feature scale parameter accordingly. We will skip the vertical scale controls for now and go to the steepness parameter instead. This parameter lets determine how steep the terrain is. As you can see, when increasing it, the slope becomes steeper, and when decreasing it, the terrain becomes really flat. Do note that no features are really lost, they are only less pronounced. The persistence parameter, however, does influence these features. As said, the persistence lets us control the intensity of each octave, and, in that sense, how visible the features of each octave are. When we decrease it, the terrain becomes less grainy, and when set to zero, we are left with only one octave. And when we increase it, we get really grainy terrain. Another method we could use to control the feature richness of our terrain is by altering the number of octaves the generator is using. By default, this is set to auto, letting World Machine decide the number of octaves needed at the current feature scale. When changing the parameter, it starts at 1 and goes up to 16. The higher the number, the more time to compute. However, it is not something you should worry about too much as the burden noise generates fast. The last parameter is the seed input. When changing the seed, a different noise pattern will be generated. Now we go back to the vertical scale division. By default, the basic noise's vertical scale is set to use full range, indicating it will go from zero height to maximum height. However, we can either specify the range or specify the gradient for the noise. When switching to specify range, the elevation base and elevation max parameters become available. The base sets the minimum height and the max sets the maximum height. When the elevation base is set to a greater value than the elevation max, the two will switch internally. When switching to the specified gradient, the slope parameter becomes available. This parameter lets us determine the maximum difference in height of the noise's slope. Because of that, it is linked to the feature scale parameter via the following equation. The max height difference is equal to the value of the slope parameter times the feature scale's value divided by the world's height. The slope parameter can be at maximum the world's height. 
from that we can determine what the max delta height becomes. Why is this important? If we set both the feature scale and the slope to 2550 meters, my world's height, there's no trouble. But as soon as the feature scale becomes larger than the slope's value, we see the terrain starts to clip at the top. When we look at the formula, we can determine why it behaves like that. The slope is at 2550 meters. The world height is at 2550 meters, but our feature scale is now larger than 2550 meters. Therefore, our max delta height increases, and that's why the terrain is clipping. When the feature scale becomes smaller than the world's height, the terrain will therefore shrink. You may be wondering, why is this useful? Using the specified gradient option, we lock the basic noise to a specific scale. That means, whether we decrease or increase the value of the feature scale, the proportions will stay the same. Let me show you this effect both within World Machine and with this animation on the right. When we go beyond our world's height, the terrain goes out of bounds, resulting in clipping. And when we go below our world's height, the height of the terrain decreases as well. In contrast, when we use full range or specify range and we change the feature scale, we see the terrain becomes steeper as we decrease it and flatter as we increase it. So not only are we now changing the frequency of peaks and troughs, but also the slope, something that is prevented when we use the specified gradient option. That's it for the basic noise device. It is an excellent tool for quick noise maps and if you do not want something complicated. Next up is the forward noise device. When opening it, it looks a lot simpler, but this is because the device is actually hiding some of its parameters by default. When we click on this checkbox or press Ctrl Shift A, these advanced parameters become visible. The Voronoi device creates a noise map based on Voronoi tessellation, which is a mathematical function that calculates the fairest distribution of area between a set of points. In World Machine, that means the further away from a point, the higher the value becomes, giving these rich like features. The feature scale parameter determines the density of the points and, with that, how steep or how flat the terrain becomes. The style enumeration hosts three style types, Fn, Fn plus 1 minus Fn, and Fn cell, going from n is 1 to n is 4. The Fn styles are different calculations of the Voronoi tessellation and therefore create different results. All create rich like features. The Fn plus 1 minus Fn style subtracts one map from another. For example, the F2 minus F1 is the same as if we were to have a F2 Voronoi and F1 Voronoi device with the same seed and use a combiner to subtract the F1 Voronoi from the F2 Voronoi device. It creates boulder-like shapes, useful for adding rocky features to your terrain. And last but not least, the Fn cell style. This creates cells based on the result of the Fn style. Each cell has a random height useful for texturing or abstract shapes in your terrain. As said, the terrain we see is based on Voronoi tessellation. There are several functions to calculate that tessellation, each giving a different result. These functions are called distance functions. And the distance function parameter is an enumeration of four of those distance functions. Euclidean is the default function and the most commonly used distance function, used by many applications. The Manhattan distance function creates a very different result, as the tessellation is now calculating using right angles. It is named after Manhattan, New York, because in mathematics it roughly describes the shortest path for most of Manhattan's streets. The alternate 1 is an alteration on the Manhattan function, and alternate 2 is an alteration on the Euclidean function. The shape parameter lets us shuffle the points around, getting a different shape for the same seed. When used distortion input is checked, the Voronoi device will get a new port, and the parameters for the distortion will be revealed. Let's hook up the basic noise to the distortion port, so we can play around with the parameters. Right now nothing is happening, because the distortion amount is set to zero. This parameter controls the amount of distortion and, when increasing it, we see the terrain becomes distorted. The direction parameter lets us control the direction of the distortion. And finally, we have the random seed input, which we can either change by hand, or randomize using the randomize button. And that's it for the Voronoi device. To get a bit more feeling for both devices, let's make a really simple mountainy landscape. Let me remove everything, and we begin with the Voronoi device. 
it's always important to start off with a good shape, and the Voronoi device is going to determine the shape of our terrain. I think an F2 will do fine for now, and if I decrease the feature scale, okay, that's maybe a bit too much. Now we play around with the shape. I'm looking for a nice mountainy like shape, and this is already looking quite promising. But as you can see, it looked really clean, sterile, at least it doesn't look natural. So what we want to do, we want to break up this shape. And we can do that using the mask board. So I'm going to add the basic noise and connect it to the mask. And oh, our Forerunner shape is already gone. And that's because the mask is not at max value. So what we can do, use the specify range and increase this value to around, let's say here. When we go back to the Forerunner, yeah, we see it's, it's back, but now it's looking too clean again. So what we can do, we can decrease the feature skill. And as you can see, more features are added to the Voronoi. Now maybe increase the steepness. Mm, not too much a fan of it. Maybe increase, no, persistence is also not making it better. What if we do this? Okay, that's, that's okay. Maybe increase a little bit. I think this is fine. Yes. But now we still have these really unnatural looking lines. So what we can do, we can use distortion to break up those lines. So again, enable the distortion, add some basic noise, and when we decrease it, nothing happens because the distortion amount is set to 1. Now we increase it a little bit, and we can see it happening. Okay, that's quite an effect. Maybe I don't want that much. So what we can do again is to specify the range and now decrease the height of the terrain. And with that, decreasing the noise effect. So now it moved a little bit. Maybe decrease it to get more swirly shapes. And that's looking promising. Change the direction a bit. Now it's more to the center. And I think this looks really good. Yes, this is nice. That were the basic noise and Voronoi devices. Both devices are great for generating basic shapes and, when combining them, we get pretty convincing results quite easily. See ya!